My wife and I have been together for 16 years, been married for 13. We got three kids ranging from 10 to five. And I know I'm extremely lucky to have the family that I do. And for an even greater amount of time, I've also had the pleasure of working at every level of education from kindergarten to university in both private and public settings, eventually leading to starting my own educational centers. So it does my heart good as a devoted father and as an educator to see my own children flourishing in the early years of their lives. But as all parents know, some moments with our kids just stand out from the rest. And I recently had one of those moments that fired me up. So I grew up as a young man in this country watching Daniel LaRusso deliver the crane kick to win his first tournament in Karate Kid. I remember seeing Jean-Claude Van Damme doing the splits between two chairs and cheering out loud as Bruce Leroy finally found the glow. And if you were a fan of, of action movies in the 80s, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So very early on, those movies inspired me to take up martial arts. Training became a part of what would be a lifelong journey for me. So I'm sure you can imagine how pumped I was when my five-year-old boy walked up to me recently and says, Dad, I want to do jujitsu. And like any career educator, I knew I had two choices of how I could help him to become the best he could possibly be at that moment. Choice number one, I could make him start memorizing names of techniques. I could quiz him frequently. I could assign grade level books uh, about jujitsu competitors. I could ensure that he listened to daily lectures by a teacher who may or may not have actually ever done jujitsu, but I definitely have him create a trifold board to be arbitrarily judged by random authority figures. Then he'd be able to wrap it all up with standardized multiple choice tests to measure his learning in comparison to other five-year-olds. Oh, and if that's during a pandemic, he would do that all via Zoom. Or he could do the alternative and the radical choice number two. He could start taking jujitsu. He could learn from masters. He could set his own goals, set his own benchmarks. He could experience the gift of falling in love with failing over and over and over until something clicks at the precise moment that it should. He could enter competitions to measure his competence in real time. He could continue that simple process of failing, persevering, growing, fail, persevere, grow, all in a very non-linear fashion until mastery was achieved. Now, some of choice number one is obviously tongue-in-cheek, and I'm referencing conventional schooling, and I want to make it clear before I continue the immense respect I have for teachers and administrators in conventional schools. 2020, the COVID scenario, it actually highlighted just how hard so many of our teachers work and how much they truly care about their students. The good teachers, and there's a bunch of good ones, they make an enormous impact, so I'm always quick to disassociate the people that I love from a system that needs an overhaul. And 2020 also highlighted more than just how hard the teachers work. It highlighted for many parents the fact that a lot of what we know of as school is still the same game of, of checkers that many of us played growing up. The problem though, is this unforgiving, ever-changing world demands a mastery of chess. I'm not sure if you've seen a checkers board and a chess board recently, but they look the same. So it takes most people a while to realize they spend a lot of time and oftentimes a lot of money playing the wrong game. Conventional school tackles an illusion of learning jujitsu without actually letting students have education through failure and, and battle on the mats. And then you add in the COVID factor. And COVID really highlighted how fragile our young people really are. Mental health, physical health, those are deteriorating at a record pace. We're being actively reminded that a grip on academic standards, doesn't matter how firm, it's never going to be enough to combat 21st century social and emotional pressures. Socially speaking, we're seeing the fruits of a continued obsession with school being tied almost exclusively to a narrowly defined academia. There's a lot of well-schooled individuals, many with graduate degrees, who've been taking to social media or taking to the streets to battle somebody that they've identified as the other side. We've learned that a passing grade in algebra is not a substitute for resilience. Writing essays in MLA format is no substitute for purpose. A focus on disconnected subjects doesn't get us a nation full of kindness or a populace that's capable of civil discourse. And of course, this is simply not just a school issue. I'm fully aware of that, but it does beg the question, what is school for? 
I'm very fortunate too, is while I've been working in my career in education, I've simultaneously been working with hundreds of employers in every industry imaginable. Uh, and it's given me what Naval Ravikant calls specific knowledge. So I get to work with young people from the start of their educational careers all the way to their actual careers. And I get to see patterns that most people don't get to see. And I can tell you, many of the conversations I've had with top employers can actually be summed up in one recent conversation with a company that you would all know. And, and the HR director says something along the lines of this to me. She says, Matt, we're having the hardest time hiring good young people. When we do finally get the college grads in the door. We often want to fire them as quickly as we have hired them. How on earth are the Stanfords and the Harvards of the world producing so many young people that are so smart, but they are not ready for the realities of life? I thought about this and I realized the better question is, what could school look like so that those young people would be ready? Chess versus checkers. Jiu-jitsu multiple choice versus jiu-jitsu practice. So I'm asking everyone right now to reimagine education in this time of uncertainty. Let's consider a great reset. Are you ready? Let's start by resetting education for our youngest elementary heroes. Let's make their standards refer to character and kindness far before academia. Let's gamify their learning process. Let's teach them to make choices by presenting them with good choices and allow them to continue to choose from a menu of awesome growth opportunities, all as a, a secret plan to empower them to understand that ultimately they are in control of their own destinies. What a heroic foundation that would be for our youngest students. Then let's reset education for middle school heroes. Let's take the middle school years to really buckle down on work ethic and to get the most of what we know of as the K through 12 academia done in those years, because don't tell anybody, but we found that it doesn't take 12 years, six hours a day, plus hours of homework in order to make that a reality. Let's get them in the habit of giving back to younger heroes on campus while also being mentored by the older heroes and have them shadowing real jobs so they can start to hone in on what their personal passions and their gifts would be. Uh, maybe we toss in some individual and, and collaborative projects that have real world outcomes too. Let's reset education for our high school heroes. Imagine a system where the high school heroes learn to run an entire campus so that the conundrum of getting a job to gain experience but not being able to get experience without a job, well, that no longer exists. Let's allow them to focus on their personal genius by working in apprenticeships and internships in their communities and fields they're actually interested in. Let's have them start their own businesses and learn that the entrepreneurial mindset benefits everybody, whether you're an owner or you're an employee. Let's employ Socratic conversations to teach them how to think versus what to think. And imagine bringing back shop classes to learn trades. Think about schools focusing on the inclusion of real food, real physical activity, so that increased physical health can support mental and emotional health. Imagine an educational K-12 community that encompasses all of that, where intentionality and responsibility and integrity, those are all integrated so that purpose and fulfillment become the byproducts. Lastly, let's reimagine education for post-high school. Imagine letting students know that a potential career in trades has never gone out of style. Let's highlight companies like Discover Praxis that provide ultimately a debt-free way to prove yourself and earn amazing employment opportunities. Imagine getting colleges and universities to admit that it's time to allow for specialty programs so that a budding doctor doesn't need geology to be well-rounded and even further in debt. What if we had scholarship opportunities that amounted to, to money to go start your next great adventure that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with going to college, rather, it's about building something unique to share with the world. It's inviting you to reimagine a new system that's really no system at all. Rather, it's a, it's a microcosm of the world that we actually live in, and it's flexible enough to adapt in that changing world. And could it be that if we came together to reimagine education this way, we could, as my friend Juan Bonifaci says, reseed humanity? So I, as I look at my own kids and the world they're growing up in, I'd love to show them examples of people talking to each other about big ideas, being okay with differences of opinion. I'd love to show them a population that's enamored with personal responsibility and endless curiosity and unwavering kindness. 
I'd be fired up to point their eyes to a horizon that allows young heroes to become experts based on their specific knowledge and then encourages them to team up with others who are doing the same in order to keep innovation alive. So here's the spoiler alert to where I started all of this today. I've opted to let option two ride out with my son. He's going to join a local jujitsu gym. And in fact, all three of my kids are pursuing their passions and they're constantly reminded to make character a priority and that living in a growth mindset focused on collecting experiences is what will shape them. Because as much as I want to reimagine a better world for my kids, maybe, just maybe, the answer is actually in a great reset in education so that we all work together to make better kids for the world. Thank you so much for listening and for reimagining education with me.